welcome you to this integration of faith, values, and learning seminar. It is a pleasure to see all of you, although I know probably you are already tired of sitting after having been sitting in PIC for, for more than an hour. But this seminar serves as a platform for us to explore how these fundamental elements of faith, values, and learning can be seamlessly woven into the fabric of our workplace in the education department and also in each of our departments, fostering not only academic excellence, but also character development, exemplary service, and a deeper understanding of our place in our world. So I would like to thank our dear speaker for accepting this invitation, Ma'am Maureen, and also to all our participants for coming this morning, to the HR and the Gen Ed team for making this event possible. And without further ado, I again welcome you to delve into the rich tapestry of faith, values, and learning, and may this seminar be a source of inspiration and enlightenment for us. Good morning and welcome. Dear colleagues, we have with us a remarkable resource speaker who began her path with the noble role of a full-time mom and a devoted master's wife, all while holding a two bachelor's degrees in agriculture. But she then decided that farming, 
wifehood and motherhood were just the beginning chapters of her remarkable journey. Our guest speaker took a detour and ventured into the world of education. Yes, you heard it right. She decided to trade plowing fields for cultivating young, young minds. Armed with her passion for teaching, she found herself in front of a high school classroom at Concepcion Adventist Academy in Ilocos Sur. But that was just the beginning of her daily academic adventure. Not content with just teaching, our speaker's career took some truly unexpected turns. She donned multiple hats, from becoming the academy teacher to a dedicated school registrar at Northeast Luzon Adventist College for a whooping eight years. But wait, there's more. She then served as an administrative secretary to the college president for five years, showcasing her administrative prowess. What's even more fascinating is that our guest speaker didn't stop at one institution. She spread her wings and flew high across different schools, even serving as the academy principal at Tierra View Academy for two and a half years. She truly left her mark wherever she'd be. Now, hold on to your seats because there's another layer to this captivating journey. Our speaker didn't confine herself to just one role. She was on a mission to make a difference. She stepped boldly into the shoes of an education associate superintendent in Northeast Luzon Mission, bringing her expertise and broadening her experience to a broader audience. And that's not all. Our speaker's enthusiasm, but I should say charisma, paved the way for her for becoming a passive impact which knew no bounds. She became the director for not one, not two, but three depart departments simultaneously. The children's ministries, women's ministries, and communications department. Clearly, juggling hats are her forte, as evidenced by her holding task. And here we are today, where our guest speaker or our resource speaker continues to shine. Currently, she holds the dual role of Administrative Assistant for Planning and Institutional Effectiveness. And at the same time, she is our IFBM coordinator. It's safe to say that her journey has been nothing short of extraordinary, filled with surprises and achievements that keep us all on the edge of our seats. So, dear colleagues, please join me in welcoming this dynamic individual as a true jack of all trades in education and administration. Our IFBL, Mrs. Maureen Inyaka Marinas. Talked about a jack of all trades because the, the the phrase that follows after that is master of none. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ma Penny. Uh, it's really captivating to hear you introduce uh, persons. And thank you for the, the introduction. And uh, it's my pleasure to serve you uh, from the department, from the IFPL department. So, good morning everyone. For 30 minutes or so, we're going to see how we can have, or how, can we, how we can do integration of values, of faith values and learning in the workplace. Uh, we had this IFBL summit with the faculty in February. And we also had another one in June and another one in August. Tyler, Dr. Tyler said, Dr. Tyler is the president of Andrews University. He said, Christian education, 
focuses on the formation of Christian persons. He even added that you know, the integration of faith and learning remains distinctive task of a Christian school. That is why we are here at AUP and that is why AUP has been established. We usually sing and we usually recite our philosophy, the work of education and the work of redemption are one to restore in humanity the lost image of God through the harmonious development of men mental, physical, social, and spiritual faculties. Also, aside from that, aside from that mandate given by the philosophy or inspired by the philosophy of the university, as Christians, as Adventist Christians, we are commissioned. Okay? The Gospel Commission tells us in Matthew 28, 19 to 20, I know you can recite it from heart. Go therefore and make disciples of what? Of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you and lo, I am with you always even to the end of the age. But you might be saying, wait mom, we're not teachers, we're not in the classrooms, we, some, maybe someone is saying, we usually don't preach in the church or what, and, but what, what are we supposed to do? Uh, Dr. John Terrell, thank you. The fifth also mentions in order that students might relate everything in life and learning to their faith, all subjects in the Christian school must be taught from a Christian perspective. Okay, you might be saying, we might be saying, well, that's all subjects. That's biology, that's history, that's English, that's statistics and research. But I would like us to see in the context of the support staff. You know, I was listening to the message of, of Ma'am Eileen earlier. That, I, I mean, in the, the litany, the litany said, Where, why are you here, staff? What was our response? We support Adventist education. And so, as supporters of Adventist education, of, as support to the Adventist education we offer in the university, not only that faith and learning be integrated in all subjects, but also have to be integrated in all experiences of our students. That means that the spiritual activities, the midweeks, the, the vespers, the revival series, that's automatic, you know. But what about, but what about the social activities? Oh, faith and social activities, they're learning in social activities or they're learning through social activities have also, be, have, have also to be seamlessly integrated. Aside from that, there's social, you know, there's social activities. Um, there, what are the social activities? There are palaro, there are acquaintance programs, there are outing. Is God seen or is faith integrated in these activities? Okay. Another is that there are experiences in the residences. Their experiences in the cafeteria, their business transactions with the, with, with the cashier, in the kubo, in the store, in the copy center, in the university salon. This, you know, these experiences should also you know, cater to the integration of faith and learning so that not only in all subjects must this be uh, integrated but also in all activities or all experiences. Other schools have 
different approaches of integration of faith and learning. There are schools that, you know, uh, have this, just like the isolation that you see there, you have the faith and the learning. And then there's also the integration. And, but in the integration, they become, they become one that you do not see, that you do not see the, the what's this? The drastic, you know, drastic move from, from, from worldly or from secular to spiritual. There are, I would like to move sana. There are programs that we do at times. This is only, you know, this is not only in AUP. There are schools that do this. I have, I have observed it. That, yes, can we have a wireless? Okay, there are schools and there are practices that we do. Sometimes, you know, we have, we have social program and then we do the devotional after that and then we change, we move to, we move to you know, the, the social activity, right? That is, that is like isolation, sometimes interaction. But, but how do we do that in a way that it's, there's integration of faith and learning even in our social activities? So after the devotional, you start right away with the social activities. Our games, okay, our games should be that these are wholesome. Di ba po? And that the ambience of the place should be something that's also wholesome and that is not, you know, very worldly. This is integration in all experiences of our students here at AUP. Not only that they see Jesus, they experience Jesus in devotionals, but they experience Jesus in all activities from start to finish. That is integration okay true education however occurs when faith and learning meet and merge when they fuse to become the pervasive driving force in christian education this then colleagues that whenever learning takes place faith must be exercised through an endeavor to see the fullness of life from god's perspective question how does an adventist university staff bring about this authentic integration of faith and learning how do we do then we are from the residences we are from the food factory from the library from student services from the guidance and from the cafeteria how do we then have or bring about this authentic integration of faith and learning? There are two answers to this. One, one must be conscious of theological and philosophical presupp presuppositions, meaning that we are aware, we, we have mastered, you know, our beliefs. So that when we, we come to meet students and they have these questions, we are able to answer them because we have mastered it. Aside from that, they see it in us. Why? Because we practice it. We do not only say, we do not only have mastered it using our words of mouth, but we, must, we have mastered it because we, they see it in our lives. Second, there must be personal commitment. And this I praise God because your attendance here now, dear colleagues, signifies that you are committed to, you are personally, personally committed to have or to bring about authentic integration of faith and learning in your workplace. Now, how do we uh, there are classifications of IFL strategies, okay? 
uh, tignan po natin to. So there are four classifications of IFL strategies. Okay, first we have the context. Con Contextual, and then we have the illustrative, the conceptual, and experiential. Okay. Now we see under each under each under each strategy uh, three strategies also. So let us talk to um, contextual. Contextual is this thing that you see. Napaputol? Okay lang. Okay. Choppy, no? In a signal? Kasi minsan naglalakad ako. Hello. Okay. So, in contextual, we have number one there is tactical. How is this tactical, uh, contextual tactical strategy of IFL? Okay. Tactical involves the name of the school or is seen in the name of the school. There is this Adventist, this, there is this Christian. Also, doon sa philosophy, there is these words holistic, redemption, redemptive. So we now able to assess that Adventist University of the Philippines is intentionally integrating faith and learning because from the name alone, we now see Adventist, right? And of course, the philosophy, what's that? The work of education and the work of redemption. So we see there the magic word redemption. Okay. Number two, ornamental. What is this ornamental? This method under the strategy Contextual refers to the aesthetics of the school. Ayan. Buti na lang at nalagay na natin yung Beatitudes bago na schedule to mamaan. <laughs> because you might be asking me, okay, you're telling that, pero we're, we're, what can we see? What do we have in AUP uh, that, tells that, uh, that tells we have contextual ornamental? Although maliliit yung text, no? yung font, size ng ating beatitudes. Palalakihin po yan. So here, contextual ornamental. Okay, I'll, I'll use the wireless because I'll move. Okay. So, in your offices, especially those visited by our students and by clients, the parents and sponsors, there have to be something that tells we are Adventists, that, in, that integrates our service, uh, that integrates faith and learning and service in the workplace. For example, one time I was sitting, I visited the office of Pastor Noel Marinas in apartment G. And we were debating because I was I was suggesting, Ma'am Ma Henny, okay, maybe it would be nice if you put, if you put that cabinet on this side. And, and he said, no, I'm reserving this wall for me to put a quotation on service. Hmm? So our offices should have quotations, no? On service, on Christian conduct, mga, mga quotation that our students would be would be learning from, would be reminded of our existence here on earth. Not only can we have quotations, can we use quotations, we can also use Bible verses. Ano po? So I am just imagining, Ma'am Anne, maybe today is September 29, maybe when we come back on November after the one-week break, that your offices will have ornamental, contextual IFL. What can you say? Amen. Yeah. So, later, we will be grouped and we are going to, to share ideas how we can have this in your areas. The third one is environmental. 
Okay. Environmental context contextual is actually the area of hidden curriculum. Okay. When I discussed this with, with the academics, of course, I related it to, you know, how they relate with students. This time, the hidden curriculum that, that is actually us, you know, that is actually us providing service. Um, it's like, no, it's not like, it's, you see, it's allowing our students to see the kind of service that Christian, that Christian workers offer. For example, when they come to us in the morning or in the afternoon and they're loaded with problems, and we too have been exhausted, exhausted all throughout the day, and here comes a student. We did not know that this student had a problem or is troubled, and because we are troubled too, Aba, good afternoon, ma'am, sabi niya, ang hina, hina pa ng boses. What can I do for you? Tapos ang ating mga, mga noo ay nakakunot. This, this is hidden curriculum. No? Do our students experience or uh, yes, see Jesus?